Hi, this is Mori reporting from Berlin. And uh, D3 had a major version update from version 5 to version 6. And uh, in this video, I want to talk about uh, things you might have to consider when uh, working with my previous videos, uh, as they were mostly done with D3 uh, version 5. So stay tuned. So first of all, I hope you're all doing fine. It was one uh, hell of a year. And um, I have not been very active uh, on this channel. And not because of the pandemic, but mostly because I was uh, heavily invested in another project, which has now ended. And uh, I wanted to close out this year with uh, one more D3 video since uh, I've reached 1000 subscribers on YouTube, which was actually my uh, goal for this year. And uh, yeah, mission accomplished, I would say. So um, I would like to say thank you. And um, I hope to change the amount of content that I push uh, to this channel in the next year. So. Thank you. So like I said, uh, this year D3 had a major version update from version 5 to version 6. And one of the big changes uh, that was introduced was uh, the way that events are handled now in D3. So if you remember video number 5, we were making this bar chart here interactive by introducing tooltips that appear uh, when we hover over one of the uh, bars here. And we were positioning these tooltips uh, by writing um, an event handler for each bar uh, for the uh, mouse entry event. And with the help of the like value of the current bar and uh, the index value of, of the current bar, we were uh, positioning um, these tooltips by passing uh, the value and the index uh, to like X and Y scales, which were which are basically responsible uh, for transforming like raw values into pixel values on our uh, SVG. And this is still version 5 of D3, so it uh, still works. But what has changed now in the version 6 of D3 is the signature of this event handler function we have right here. So instead of receiving the current value and the current index value of uh, the current bar or the current piece of data, we now receive uh, the like current event which you're also probably used to from other event handlers, and the current value of uh, yeah, the current piece of data. So this means uh, we no longer have access to the like index value of the current uh, bar, which we're using to position the tooltip on our uh, x-axis. So I have now reverted the signature of this function here and installed version 6 of D3. And now if I uh, hover over one of the elements here, you can see it doesn't work anymore. So now with version 6 installed, let's now change back the uh, like arguments here from the value into the event and the index into the value. And uh, now the problem remains, we now have to kind of figure out uh, how to grab the index of the current bar that has been uh, hovered over. So there are several ways to do this. And uh, one way is to tell D3 Hey, uh, D3, um, select all of the existing elements with the class name bar in my SVG and uh, return to me their nodes. So they're like DOM elements behind these bars. And then return to me the index of the current bar that I'm interacting with. So the, the current DOM element. And the current DOM element that I'm interacting with is actually in the event object here itself by looking at event.target. So uh, we're now comparing the DOM element that we're interacting with, with all of the DOM elements uh, of these bars, and then retrieving the index value we're looking for. So this will actually return to me the index value that I am using down here to position our tooltip. So if I save this, uh, then you will see that our like uh, your bar chart here has returned to normal. So in the next example, in video number 13, we were building this brush chart with D3. And you can see that the code example doesn't even work with version 6, because up until version 6 of D3, uh, you had this special uh, event object you had to import from the D3 library, which contained all of the information uh, about the event that is currently happening. And uh, this is no longer the case. So in version 6, this import, this event here, is no longer uh, exported from the D3 library. So what we now need to do, like in the uh, previous example, we now need to, uh, yeah, like grab the event from the arguments of this event handler. So if I do this, everything 
will just be the same. So you just have to be careful when you uh, are working with events because you no longer import like the special um, like brush or zoom events uh, or like click events from the D3 library, but you have direct access to them uh, in the uh, event handlers. So in the next example, in video number 16, we were building this uh, zoomable line chart here with D3. And this still works with uh, version six, but uh, there's one thing that you can actually now completely remove. So uh, you can see here, there's this like event handler for zoom events. And we were using this special uh, zoom transform function from uh, D3 to grab the current zoom state of our SVG uh, to store it in a use state hook. And uh, this, no, this is no longer necessary to like grab the current zoom state of our SVG because we now have access to the zoom state in the event that is being passed to this uh, event handler. So instead of saying the zoom state is like the transformed uh, version of our SVG here or the node of our SVG, we can now say the zoom state is just simply uh, event.transform. So you can uh, now uh, remove uh, this import and it will just work uh, the same way. So one final example I want to look at is video number 11, where we were building this like force directed physics based uh, chart. And you can see that with version six, it doesn't work either. And uh, that is because another uh, like export from D3 is no longer available for import. And that is the mouse uh, import we have right here. And we need to remove this and then go down to the uh, event handlers that we were using, for example, the uh, mouse move event handler, you can see uh, we were using this mouse function. And instead of using that, we now have to yeah, uh, access the event from the arguments as before. And now uh, to grab the like X and Y position of the mouse move event on our SVG, we actually have to import something else from D3 and that is the so-called pointer function. So this will be imported. And here we now have to pass, <clears throat> pass uh, this event uh, into so that we get the relative uh, relative x and y position of uh, that mouse event uh, on our SVG, and the same I will also do uh, here for the click event where I'm also using the uh, like mouse function, and here I also have to grab the event from the arguments, and if I save that, you can see everything works um, as it did before. Cool. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it and uh, got a better feeling about this new version of D3. If you have any other like issues with the um, uh, code examples and the GitHub repo, just let me know. I will be updating uh, all of them for the new version. And I can also recommend to you to um, like check out this migration guide for uh, D3. And uh, yeah, I guess that wraps up 2020 for me uh, on this channel. and. Uh, yeah, take care and see you in the next one. Bye.